Okay, we got to do, we got this, the next part is easy. It's a review from the first week. It's just a little twist on it. So this will give your brains a bit of a break. Um, look, it's a train and trains are cool. I've got a nice picture of a train, this train in Mexico. It's a Mexican train. Um, so we're shifting gears. We're going back to the world of measuring the world. What's the problem with measuring the world? It's never the same. It's not quite. Right? Oh, yeah. Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Frank. Hey, do you make hot dogs? Do you like hot dogs? Don't look. Don't look. Do not look. <laughs> they have you read um, Jungle in the Jungle anymore? What? Oh, that the meat packing the meat plants? Thing? Yeah. I used to be standard reading in, in ninth grade. Did you read it in school? The meat packing plant in the ninth grade where they would they would shovel the rats in the the sausage hopper. My teachers always mentioned it, but they never made it. Okay. You never mentioned it. It's a really compelling read. Oh, uh, I read that. Yeah, it, it passed the. It was the beginning of the first set of movements for actual health standards for food. Um, I think we we benefit a lot. Okay, so we're measuring the world. In this case, we're measuring how loud a train is. So here's our train. What do we call something that takes the measurement of the world and turns it into a number? Yeah, so it's a, a measured value comes from, we would call it like an instrument or a sensor. Um, those sensors never quite get exactly what is happening in the world. There's variation, there's inconsistencies. There's a lack of precision. So there is, this is an imperfect process. And so we want to describe the imperfectness uh, by using numbers. See, this is a math class. And those two numbers that we've seen, and we throw these terms around, they want you to be able to differentiate between accuracy, which is how close is the measured value to the what? Yeah, uh, whatever that means. How close is the measured value to, we'll say in quotes, like the real, uh, the real value, or we would say the accepted value, usually something that comes from a more calibrated instrument. Um, this usually applies when you are um, setting up an instrument. So how close is the measured value to the real or accepted value? So this is usually described in either relative or absolute terms. So how do we measure accuracy? We do so by describing the error rate. So absolute error is the absolute value, meaning we don't care about positive or negative, of whatever we observed or measured, observed minus the true value. That's pretty simple. Um, again, we've seen this before. I just want you to see the problems the way that they'll have them all the time. So the, remember, this is absolute value. So we don't care. Um, negatives, we just drop the negative. So the outcome is only positive here. Um, and then how do we get relative error? Relative error, we just take our absolute error, observed minus uh, true, divided by who? True. Yeah, so what percent of the true value was the error? And then we multiply it by 100% uh, percent to get our percent. Um, so we'll practice this. Again, this is normally an absolute value on the top. We don't care which direction it's off. We just care how far it's off. OK, precision, on the other hand, is how specific is a measurement? How specific or precise is a measurement? This is usually stated as to the nearest something in the unit of your tool to the nearest blank unit. So it could be a scale that measures to the nearest pound or a thermometer that measures to the nearest 10th 
degree Celsius. Um, and in trains, if we're measuring sound, we'll do decibels. And a reader for our decibel practice. Maybe some of those trains. We're going to jump some down to And if you read, do you like trains, first of all? I mean, yeah. I don't have a problem with them. No problems with trains. I mean, I do know. We'll start with that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what makes the train station? What did that just sound like? It sounded like a measurement of precision. Good. On the other hand, Okay, so these questions, this is exactly how they've used these questions in both of the tests. The first thing they're going to ask is, which tool is more precise? Use numbers to back up your claim. I'm going to suggest that you organize it just like this. Make a list of your two tools. We've got an app sound sensor. So an app sensor, and we're comparing it to a dedicated meter. So list them both. Now, what's the key that we need to know? When precision is occurring, what is more precise, smaller or bigger numbers? Smaller, the smaller chunk. Right, it's measured this one, the, the meter will measure at 10th decibel chunks. Your phone's meter goes, this should have, sorry, this should have been uh, decibel. Um, oops, I was actually, the problem on the final was about weight of vegetables. So it actually came from me reading the final. This should be decibels. I'll, I'll put money, I would put money down that it would be about food weight in a grocery store, but we'll see. Um, app sensor. So this is the keys. You just have to convert them to a comparable value. So one half uh, should probably come over to a, a decimal so we can compare it. So that is nearest. What's the decimal version there? Point five decibels, lowercase d, capital B. And then the dedicated meters precision is. 0.1 decibel. So then you'll write a sentence and say, meter is more precise because 0 0.1 is less than 0 0.5 decibels. So I just want you to be able to see this pattern. I don't think these, these are probably the most straightforward, but they've been the first page on all the finals I've seen. Um, Okay, then we'll do accuracy. Any questions on precision? Smaller is better. In case of accuracy, closer is better. So closer to the true value is better. Closer is more accurate. So we're just going to compute the error. We measure accuracy in error. So we'll put our two tools down, our app sensor and our, our meter. Um, we take the observed, what did our uh, meter, our, our app measure? Uh, the train at, yep, 91.5 lowercase d, capital B minus our accepted or true value with our fancy sensor that gave us what? So that was pretty close, 91.7 decibels. So the accuracy is 0. Yeah. Our accuracy is. <laughs> and they go to the calculator. Wouldn't they be the what? Yeah, uh, well, uh, zero point, so it's point two away. Jalen, maybe I didn't understand. How far away is the meter now? 
the meter measured the train at ninety point three. How far was that from the true value? Hmm. Mr. Meter, how far was he? He's using his brain, He's keeping it alive. Four point four, close. One point four. Okay, so in accuracy, what do we lock? Smaller or bigger differences? Smaller. We want to be closer to the real deal. So if it asks to support your answer using numbers, we would say the meter is oh is we say we could say is less. We want to say more. So we'd say the app is more accurate since it's measured value is only 0.2 decibels from the accepted. Whereas you could say, whereas uh, the meter I'm sorry. The app is more accurate since its measured value is only 0.2 decibels from accepted. It says sense. It sort of says sense. From uh, is measured is only 0 .2 decibels from accepted. Where? Whereas meter is we could say off by 1.4 decibels easy enough now what did we what did we discover can something be something without can it be the most another question What's, what did we answer for what's more precise? The meter is more precise. It gets us down to a tenth of a decibel, but its value was less accurate because it was further away. That's what they want you to understand. They want you to accept the reality that you can have precision just because it's giving you a lot of information doesn't mean that it's giving you information closest to the way the world actually is. So you have to be able to make that claim. Okay, try, um, when are we out? 30? We have 45? Yeah, we're four. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, good. We'll have time to do um, conversions. So try, the, try this on your own. Compute the relative rate. I've been doing a lot of brain work. You can do relative rates. Compute these as a percentage of your real value. You've got the equation, you've got the tool, you've got the drive, you've got the top. How one percent by one percent were each of these tools off from the real value? Megan, you can do it. There I did it. You can try the one percent. Give it a little oxygen. What's that? Rocks. No. I've actually never used the word. <laughs> and because um, it's absolute value, we can just drop it right. I heard a good I heard a good sound in number. Yay. Our app sensor. So we already have our absolute value. So our relative was just our point two. That's how far it was from the real divided by our accepted. And that came out to be 
app. I'm on the app. Yeah. And that's a percent, right? Yeah. Beautiful. So it was about a quarter percent off. Uh, and then how far off was the meter percent wise? 1.4 divided by 91.7 times 100 percent gives you what? We're so close. Allison got 1.5. Amanda? 1.53. Okay, so this, this makes sense because the meter is further. So as a percentage of our absolute sound, the meter is, is farther off. Um, so I gave you another, one practice for the weekend, uh, same, same verse or second verse, same as the first, but with a, a meter. This is in accuracy and precision is 3C. 3C. It's all it's all listed on your your topic list. I gave you a chapter on each one. You know what? We did it. We did it when we were doing percent change at the very beginning. It was over Zoom. It was we were just getting to know each other. Um, we had the first two weeks in Zoom. Um, so this. This, by the way, installing sensors is what I do for my other, my third job. I do sensor, sensor installs instead of job and programming. Yeah, job. jobs. Okay, you ready for conversions? Yes. Yep, because it's absolute, we'll just drop the negative. It just depends on whether it was higher or less than the true value. 